Okay, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple missing pieces in our uh, search for the meaning of functions in JavaScript. Um, but, uh, and so this video, I want to fill in one little gap here. And I want to look at what it means for a function to return a value and what's the syntax for that and why you might want to use that. Now, this will be kind of like a short video. I'm just going to kind of really lay out the, the quick syntax of it. And I hope that in future videos, the scenario of needing a function that returns a value will come up a bit more often and then it'll make more sense in a kind of more involved context. But let's just sort of see how this goes for a second. So I think to begin the discussion, the best way to begin the discussion is to look at these two, fun these two functions that are part of the P5 library. There's the ellipse function and there's the random function. Okay, what's the difference? I mean, there's a lot of differences between these two functions, but what's a key difference between these two functions? Ellipse draws an ellipse in the window. Random provides a random number between a, uh, a range, between a minimum and a maximum. And so when I say provides, what I really mean is it returns a value. It evaluates to a number. When the random function finishes executing, it hands back this answer, and that answer is often used to, you know, it's stored in a variable, or it's used, you know, you might use it, uh, fill uh, random, 255, right? This is using the random function to pick a random number between 0 and 255 and use it instantly inside of this fill function to set a color. Ellipse does not evaluate to anything. It just draws a circle and finishes. And this is that distinction. Random is a function that returns a number. So what does it mean? These functions are in the P5 library. They were written by somebody. <laughs> and this function was written with a new kind of line of code. Uh, that line of code is return something. So let's look at the syntax for that. And I'm going to kind of just make up a, somewhat of a silly uh, scenario, and I'll, uh, we'll just sort of build a quick example that does this. But So the syntax for defining a function is function, the name of the function, that's something that you make up, the parameters to the function, that's also something that you make up. A open curly bracket and end curly bracket, and then the code that goes inside the function. So this is whatever code you want to be. And typically, if a function returns a value, that return statement, this new statement, is going to come at the end of the function. Now, there's exceptions to this, of course. But here is the new line of code, return something. You know, that's the question. You know, what goes there? So this looks just like our the, the definition of a function that we wrote a flower function before, function flower with some arguments, it drew some stuff to the screen. Now this is the same, but we're adding a new line of code return. So let's think about uh, conversion. So this is, uh, oh boy, this camera keeps shutting off. Um, hopefully this will fix it. Uh, hello, I'm back. Okay, so let's think about uh, converting numbers. So uh, something you can do in P5 uh, that uh, uh, comes up quite often is, uh, you know, you have an angle and you want to know what its value uh, in degrees is. I don't think I've talked about angles in any of these videos. Maybe I have. I talked about it in class. But let's just look at this for a second. Oh boy, this is a bad example. If, uh, so if you're not familiar, there are two ways of thinking about angles. One is degrees. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. These are common degrees. <laughs> Uh, another is uh, radians. So uh, radians is a unit of measurement for angles. Pi divided by two radians is 90 degrees. So what this function should do is it should take the value pi divided by two, convert it from radians to degrees, and we should see uh, 90 print out down here. And by the way, uh, let's, hopefully I'm going to get this right. So, and you can see that that's what we got here. So this function converts a number to another unit of measurement and provides that and prints it out. So the thing is, let's look at something different, something that's not in P5. Let's say what you want to do is you have, uh, you know a marathon uh, is a 26.3 or 4, I don't know why I can't remember, 26.3, something like that miles. So I want to have a function, I want to know how many kilometers is that. So I need a function that converts that number from miles to kilometers. So if I run this, of course, we get uncaught reference error, miles to kilometers is not defined because that doesn't exist. So it's up to us now to, write to, to define that function. So how do we define a function? Okay, my function, the name of the function, 
and then whatever the parameters are, one parameter is miles. So when that function is called, 26.3 will get sent into that miles variable, the parameter to the function. And then what's the formula? Miles times 1.6. So, you know, I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but one mile to 1.6 kilometers, you know, it's 1.6.0, blah, 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 something like that. But you get the idea. This is a very simple formula to convert. And now we have the answer. The, num the kilometers is miles times 1.6. All we need to do is say return km. So this is this new line of code, return a value. That means when this function finishes executing up here, it will evaluate to a number. And so let's look at this. And now we can, uh, we can do it again, km2. You know, what is a uh, ultra marathon? I don't know what an ultra marathon is, 100 miles? You know, so I'm, you know, so we're looking at this function twice. So we can see 26.3 miles is 42.08 something 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 kilometers, and say 100 miles is 160 kilometers. So this is how a function can return a value. Now, you might, as an exercise, just come up with some other type of conversion. You know, Celsius to Fahrenheit is a good one. It has a bit more of a complex formula. You know, look it up online. Maybe I'll, if I can never remember to do anything, I would put it in the description for this video. Um, and uh, you know, the weight, your weight on you know the moon versus Earth is another thing you could think about. Uh, kilograms to pound. You know, there's so many you know dollars to some other currency. So you come up with some kind of conversion formula and maybe try to implement this function. That would be something I think you could try. Uh, what I want to do in the next video that I'm going to make is start looking at how functions can be inside of objects. And in that case, I think there's another scenario that I want to demonstrate, which is uh, having a function. Uh, let me think about this for a second. If you have an object and you want to know if the mouse is on top of it, could the object itself have a function that sends you back true or false based on whether the mouse is over that object or not. So uh, that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, this wasn't the best video I've ever made, but hopefully it kind of succinctly just at least uh, gives you a sense of the syntax and how it works. And I'm going to hit uh, stop now.